happening and how it started and a few things like that. Uh, Max usually does that. So who is who <clears throat> has come today? Lakesh. Who is Lakesh? Lakesh is the blue from an unknown planet, but he, they have three large planets in the Pleiadian system of 200 stars mm -hmm. so. But we don't know which star they're around, so they uh -huh. don't tell us. And Lakesh in uh, human language means another you. Another you. Which, which is a nice name to have. He chose another you, which is very cool. So. Uh-huh. Uh, and he is on his ply. He ne they, the blues, this kind of blues, they never, they're known as the blues. They never leave that planet, or three planets. They stay there in astral project here. They travel around the galaxy just by astral never They are very peaceful. They are not making mm -hmm. any ties, any allies with any, any others. That's right. And they are neutral, but they kind of help by channeling. Yes, they help by giving um, their opinions to other uh, species if they're asked. But they do not get involved in any uh, alliances. Tepe, Tepe came through. Tepat is one of the uh, scientists on board the ship that's in the, going around the uh, North American continent, I guess, trying to help with the weather and seismic and different things in that way. Tepat, Tukur, and, and these two are all on the same ship, so mm -hmm. they uh, look after our weather and stuff so that it doesn't become too extreme. Now. I guess they must have had their hands full this last week because it was like really, really, really cold. And they were supposed to have tempered it somewhat so that it wasn't even as cold as it was supposed to be. So What, what races are they? <clears throat> oh, these uh, do is uh, Yigil. Yigil, great. Yep. Uh, Takar is a Lyran and she's a, about eight or nine feet tall. Nine feet tall. And. Um, who Tepe is a Pleiadian and he's a tall Pleiadian from yes, planet Era, mm -hmm. the star Tageta. Right. Yes, Era. And how tall they are? Eight feet? Yeah, eight feet. Yeah, they're pretty big. Uh, the Yigil is the eight, smallest seven. of the three. So. Yigil is six feet. Uh, <clears throat> Pleiadian Erans are about seven or eight, and Lyrans yeah. are nine. So. Uh, the greys look like greys, so Yael look like grey. Uh, Pleiadians look very much like humans, just taller and and healthier. Yes. And they have different colors of skin. They have they can change the color at will. They can they genetically modify themselves to absorb sunlight. So now they have a um, how do you call it a fashion fashion to be green. <laughs> It's in fashion to be green on arrow now, uh -huh. so. But they also can be blue and other colors. So. And the Lyrans are cat cat people, feline humans, um, looking like lions, I guess. But you know, having the hum human human um, stand up, stand uh, vertical appearance, you know, with the same thing. But uh, I would say very much like Klingons, a lot of hair. <laughs> yes, Takur has. I, I can't really see all the features, but I can see that she has hair from her face down to her chest. Anyway, so. All right. Why don't they mm. contact us? Why didn't open contact happen yet? Um, because we're not ready, and they're not ready. Uh, there's so many uh, relative things that are happening. Things relativity. Uh huh. Um, Related. Yeah. So, I think they just have to find the right time and the right place. They have ideas of what to do, but they're just not sure. And they don't think that we're ready anyway, so they're taking their time on that. So <clears throat> why aren't we ready? Well... The uh, word backwards anyway. sounds wrong. How about conservative? Conservative. <laughs> so, anyway... Um, I think they're just waiting for the right time for more people to become knowledgeable and and for the light workers to do their thing to help uh, bring up the vibration of the earth as so well. So their prediction is that if they show up now, we'll have a major economic collapse now, basically. If people realize that aliens are strong and they have weapons and uh, they don't attack us, that means that we are not in danger, 
So there is no reason to pay taxes to develop weapons here, so the whole economy based on trade of weapons and fuel may fall apart because the aliens might also have free energy and uh, if humans drop the idea of weapons <clears> and <throat> they might share with us that technology. It's already on Earth, it's already been published, except that people who are in charge of finances, they prefer to have the economy built on, on trade of oil because it makes them rich when they trade oil. Yes. And free energy would destroy their income from, um, from trading oil. Yes. And also, so if the military production of, uh, of uh, weapons goes, then the whole economy kind of has to change, and um, the Earth is not ready for that change yet. Right, exactly. And um, <clears throat> so they're holding off to make sure that everything, all the situation and circumstances are going to be just right. Because when that happens, it's going to be in multiple places, I'm sure, from, a, the, from what they have said. They're not just going to appear in one place. It's going to be... How many did they say? Ten or something? Yeah, it was quite a few. I don't remember how many. Yeah, around ten places. They want now to appear <clears throat> in ten places and and uh, speak in the appropriate languages and uh, in different countries and even do broadcasts in different languages. They would do appear on television. That was their plan. But right. the timing... So my understanding about the timing, they wait and they, they wouldn't want to be responsible for, for the destructions for meltdown, economic meltdown, which might happen after their appearance. So they're delaying that until I think they will be... Like they can't delay it anymore. If there is another danger which would come, then they would have to, like, they would have no choice other than, other than to show up. So there is... Our leaders have to be pressed against the wall to, be, to agree to that. They wouldn't do it by their own will until they really have to and the aliens won't do by their own choice until they have to really show up in the open but but they prepare everybody is preparing for that so after that after they appear what will happen after that um <clears throat> then they will uh, probably educate that would be my next thought yeah they're preparing <clears throat> they would just show the people that they're not here for war intentions or for mm -hmm. a negative thing but then i would think that uh, they would uh, start to educate on how to have a better life and world and tell us about the things that we're doing wrong, which we probably know, but they they probably, the people that need to change would probably listen to them, <laughs> I would think, but we'll see. Yeah, the, the end goal is to have the Earth first ascend to the next dimension, Right. second, to be a member of galactic community, to transform our economy, to become telepathic. These are main main goals for the next 200 years. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. What about ascension? Ascension is actually our evolution. Um, I know there's a lot of things written about ascension I've, I've read and they're, they're, they're sort of all over the place about what they think ascension is. But what I, my understanding of ascension is that this is the we are coming into a phase in humanity where we are changing and there's evidences of us actually rising in vibration rising in our telepathic abilities and becoming the next level of humanity which would be evolution and that is why so many of the species around our planet are observing because they want to they want to be a witness to this slow evolution it's not going to happen like overnight but they want to be witness to the how it comes about not that it hasn't come about in other planets but we're sort of unique in the universe as far as i understand um we're very 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 diverse and for us to become the next level of ascension is going to be quite a feat and be quite a, a miracle why are we unique? Because <clears throat> we are so diverse. Um, there are many cultures in other planets that they've had their planet around so long they've, they've sort of connected a little bit more. Our planet has gone through so many diverse changes, which some of their other planets have too, but we've been on the Earth and then the Earth flips or something happens that, that destroys our uh, population and 
vegetation and stuff and we're starting all over again. This time um, we're closer to uh, becoming part of the universe or galaxy than we ever were before so they want to make sure that our civilization doesn't get wiped out again. So, so after we ascend what would be different? We would have fourth dimensional identities which means that there would be we would be or have a tele telepathy probably I'm thinking that telepathy is part of it and um, be able to ascend into a, a fourth dimensional world as well which I'm not sure after all, we ascend yeah. no, after we ascend what would be different in our culture would the humans have bodies yes I'm sure would they have families I'm, I think so would they have governments I think at least some government is necessary uh-huh so that's, but uh, you know, being in this point of the ascension, it's hard to say what it's going to look like at the end. But those are the uh, thoughts and ideas that um, they sort of made present to me. Out of all civilization <clears throat> we mentioned, are they sort of four dimension? Most of the dimensions, well, I, from my understanding, all creation started pretty much in the third dimension and moved out from that. And, and you are mistaken here. Uh, you, I'm mistaken there? <laughs> that's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's my understanding that most people started it. Oh, most, people. You most, said creation. Well, most beings. Oh, beings good enough. Yes. Beings started in the third dimension and then uh -huh. moved to the fourth dimension. Uh -huh. But I'm sure that there's some that were created in the fourth dimension. How about dimension. angelic beings? Angelic beings were created for specific purposes. So they're outside of dimensions. They're outside of dimensions. How about fairies? Fairies are fifth and sixth dimensional beings. So they didn't dimension. evolve from third dimension. No. Yeah. So we have to formulate uh, the civilizations <laughs> we actually talk to are yeah. are they they made it from third to the fourth. Yeah. But the creation started outside of our creation, and then it was kind of. A part yeah. Of the, yeah, I'm just th saying the part that the, the planetary people, right. I'm not sure about fairies and all, all that, but planetary people, I think, started in the third dimension. That's my opinion. Yes, yes. So. How do they start? They've been they planted. Were, mm, they were or seeded evolved. or planted. Or evolved, right? They, sometimes yeah. they evolved. They're created. But, or evolved. But they were created to change instead of... So are they created from scratch or they evolved from... Are... <clears throat> Apes and mice are ancestors. I don't know. <laughs> I do. We have similar, you tell them. <laughs> we have similar genome. Our genome is 99% mouse. We are, mice are our relatives, very close ones. And cows. Interesting. It cows? is. Any, any mammals are 99% similar to us. Wow, very good. Any mammals. Mm -hmm. So how have you been created and evolved at the same time? No, no, you tell me. Yes, we have been created and evolved at the same time. It's right. not a, uh, a contradiction. <clears throat> the no, paradox, I don't think so. Basically, the, the guys who create us, they use whatever is available for tools. They made us from dirt, but also they made us from mice or whatever. The pre prehistoric... Uh, what's the word for monkeys? Prehistoric monkeys are called... Primates. Primates, right. They made us from <clears throat> prehistoric <clears throat> primates by mixing the primate DNA with... DNA from other planets. But the primates are our ancestors, so there is no contradiction here. But after they kind of mix, they plant them, and they culture them, they give them technology, they gave us... Do you know that we have only so many, about 20%, 20 only 20 um, cultured... Uh, 20, 20 species of domesticated animals on Earth. There is thousands or hundreds of thousands, or millions of other species, wild species, only 20 domesticated animals. You can count them. Cows, donkeys, dogs, cats, and so on. And that's it. Because they had to be adapted to us. And uh, that was sort of made by our creators. The alien creators, right? Okay. I'm, say, I'm staying, standing, <clears throat> uh, stepping away from our gen general topic, right? Ascension. It's okay. They made it, they made it, but they made it very, most of them made it much easier. 
Uh, Bashar describes how they made it. They said a being, which sounded like a Jesus, I'm not sure if it was Jesus, came to them and united the whole planet telepathically in three days and left. Maybe it wasn't Jesus, but that's how they made it. They said they just done. On Earth, there is so many factors. Diversity, yes. Separation, yes. Uh, mind control, uh, Orion inheritance of hierarchical structure, uh, egotism, uh, conflicts, wars, uh, stupidity. And they thought until the last moment, they thought until half a year ago, they thought that we are hopeless actually, because they didn't know we are capable of telepathy. And they didn't understand us until they created the colonies. The colonies were a big help to them because they learned firsthand from telepathic people what, how we think, do things, and why, why things are the way they are on our planet. And that really helped them to understand uh, uh, the human condition, basically. So, um, what else can I say about that? What do they do there? Well, on the colonies, the, the one colony is all uh, teaching telepathic, how to become telepathic. The uh, second colony, I forget what they're, I forget what the, all the colonies do actually now. <laughs> now it's been a while since all right, they, ever... they, they develop the contact up there. Mm -hmm. You know, if they cannot come here because of all the troubles, they're not invited. They don't want to come and invite it. And they don't want to disturb the economy, but, but up there they, they, they invite volunteers. So until this summer they abducted people, did hybridization, hoping to improve our genetics to make us telepaths. That, I mean, they wanted to help us, but one of the reasons they did abductions and hybridization program, they wanted to create a new or better species of human. And they succeeded partly in that. They created hybrids and planted them back. So they created and implanted a lot of hybrid people who are, who are born humans, are growing in human culture, but they have special talents, including capability for telepathy. In ecologists, they do just the opposite. They take humans which are just talented humans with telepathic skills and teach them telepathy through meditation and and just you know being in in, in a surrounded being surrounded by in, in, immersed in telepathic culture they speak to them telepathically the humans have the opportunity to telepathically communicate to aliens who are born uh, with that capacity who, whose culture is already telepathic so they have now nine telepaths and few more who are promising and uh, the communication with first telepaths made them realize our potential. Basically, they understand that we are not hopeless as a species and that they understand us much better. Yes. I don't know if they... Did you think they thought it, we were hopeless? I think so. Okay. They didn't say so, but... I'm, I'm, <laughs> they didn't say so, but that, uh, yeah, but, but they sort of acted like that. Yeah. But, 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 but then they say, now we know that you are not hopeless. So, <laughs> I... <laughs> infer that before that they thought that we are much <laughs> now, now they say we are not hopeless 60 percent before that they was thinking that we are not hopeless zero percent or maybe three percent that sort of thing but yeah, yes chances do. are here that they, they know the future oh, they they are from different dimensions so they can see the future only a few days in the front ahead but the higher they are the beings there are multiple dimensions the more they can see the future and there are some which see very far Mm -hmm. And we have uh, an honor to be visited by Buddha today. In Buddhism, uh, how do you call the hands? I don't even know. I don't know. Maybe like that? I'm not sure. Yes. Tap. I'd have to look it up. Yeah, this uh, Tibetans. Is like that? I think no, that, I, I don't know. No, Japanese do. And we thank Buddha for coming. That was nice. Thank you. Uh, we had Jesus last time. And it was, what can you say? I will say, you know, we had Jesus for real. And in the past, we had visited, we have been visited by uh, ancient consciousness called L. L, yes. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, L is known to humans as a bull god, not bulldog, but bull god. Just switch three letters, bull god. And he picked that uh, sign in ancient times because. It projected majesty, it projected power. He wanted humans to listen, and that sign kind of helped him to get authority. 
he didn't physically come you know the clothes that he was he was as a fire symbol of fire but he spoke to humans and changed few things and gave few things he was known to egyptians sumerians and other cultures he didn't he didn't go into details but El means God in many human languages. Uh, Michael, Samuel, Elohim, a lot of a lot of human words contain El in meaning God. And at that time he was they were they were El were connected to our Father God and maybe not pretended, but at least were connected and representing him on earth. Now they kind of stepped a little away there. Uh, their role is housekeeping God in the galaxy. They are responsible for distribution of wealth. 99% <coughs> of our galaxy, other civilizations, are using them instead of money. They don't have money, they have El, who is responsible for fair and rational distribution of wealth and resources. Okay, that sounds right. And he said to us that he plans, he tries to work with our current system and it doesn't want him. And our civilization, our race, wouldn't survive if we continue this path. It's not news to us, but he says that it has been decided up there, but there's collective consciousness, and I assume they do it with the permission or direction from the Creator. They're not the Creator, they're not Father God, but they're part of the Father God. Uh, it has been decided to melt down our economy 13 years from now, in, 20, in the year 2027, and according to their calculations, predictions, if we go at the rate we are now, half of human population, about 4 billion, will perish in uh, local violence and famine, mostly in big cities. We will have a lot of warnings and humans will be advised to leave the cities and go to safer rural areas to wait for about half a year until the, the uh, upheaval is down. That is unfortunate news. We have 13 years to fix that and to prepare for that, and hopefully we'll reduce the suffering and the casualties from 50% to way lower percentage. But, but that's their plan, and you know we pay right. attention to that because many of other aliens who we consulted with confirmed that this is for real. They are not joking, and this is not a pretense. It's really their plan. But they, I think they gave it to us ahead of time so that we could actually help them uh, with the... To help uh, us. Yeah, so help them help us. So with the, uh, you know, t enlightenment of humanity and stuff. So yeah, that the, uh, So that it won't be so much destruction. So we're, we have 13 years to work on that. And I think that that could help a lot if people were starting to understand. So. My major hope is YouTube, from destruction of Earth to YouTube. YouTube is a free media, and television is not free media, but it can become. When the open contact happens, I ask my alien <coughs> friends to create as many videos as possible and broadcast them, sell them, g gift them to television networks, and have these hundreds of hours of, of videos broadcasted on Earth to awaken the humanity, to explain to humanity the truth. It's all about the truth. Many people on Earth know the truth, but many more don't. So for them to awaken to the truth, it takes, it takes television. Television is the key media now to mm -hmm. teach, educate, open eyes. And it is moving this way, but not fast enough. So the colonies, colony number two, creates videos. They, humans, come there, volunteer humans, professional, video professional, come and take interviews from aliens. They take about three interviews per day, and there are several crews doing that. Mm -hmm. And we learned today that they did already about 2,000 hours of interviews. If part of that, say 200 hours, is broadcasted to Earth, say interview with Greys, interview with Pleiadians, interviews with... Uh, Yael with Arcturians, which Arcturians, I don't think they give a lot of interviews, but but uh, other aliens like reptilians, we have friendly reptilians, we have Andromedans who are helping, we have Galactic Federation of Light, Ashtar Command. If these interviews are broadcasted on Earth, and my goal, our goal is to help the aliens to become as popular as Beatles. <laughs> 
and then it will awaken the humanity. Beatles did more than any politician at their time to awaken the humanity. Now the aliens can do even better. Yeah, that's an interesting way to look at it. They can become popular. They can become feared or they can become popular. That's right. And they have a lot of capacity of doing that. They can read, not minds, but they can read a lot of things. They cannot and read minds. If they wanted to destroy us, they would have done so already. So, I know that they're friendly because of the way they handle things is just in a gentle way, in a gentle understanding. They try to be as understanding as possible. So, it's, it's a relief to me that they're not out there working against us. Yeah, the good ones. Yeah, right. Our friends. Yeah, there's bad ones out there too, but most, most are good. Most of the ones which talk to us. Right. We are protected. We have uh, our friend fishing from Yale. He is protecting us from uh, intruders who are negatives. But the reptilians came to us. It was fun to talk to them. Thank you. For, come again. We'll, talk. we'll be happy to talk to you again. They were friendly reptilians. Yes. yes. Now, why do this strange Reiki thing? What is Reiki? Reiki is energy healing with the hands. Energy comes out of your hands when you're doing Reiki. From my experience, it comes through my, through my body and out through my hands. I don't feel, it's not me giving you the energy. Of, of course, part of me goes into you when I give the energy, but it's more of a higher energy and it's for healing, it's for relieving pain, it's for making people calmer. It's for understanding. I think that it has a lot of different things that it can do. Is it something new? No, it's been around a long time. How long how is long? it? I don't know. Reiki? Yeah. Reiki itself? Yeah, how long? hundred years. A hundred years. How about healing, healing with hands? That's been around a long, lot longer. So is Jesus did healing with hands. You know, yes. more, about, you, you know more about that. I know. So I, I read a channel in... Uh, uh, a, student of Jesus, a female, uh, was channeled by Robert Shapir and she described that she would uh, heal the hand by, by laying hands like that on the back of the person, on the hump. And you invite your energy in the heart and then invite it to go wherever it's needed to heal the person. It's all based on intention. If you're positively intentioned, it will be positive. Uh, you link to the person at that time. And that's why we do channel during Reiki. That's how it started and it worked great for us. Yes, it worked. It, it started during um, a Reiki session here. I started hearing voices. Well, first of all, I sensed that we were being watched. Uh -huh. And then a couple weeks later, I started getting voices about how to do Reiki better. And I listened to those. And I was going, uh-huh, uh-huh. And he's, he's saying, what... What are you, what's going on? <laughs> you know? So, um, and then finally he started asking questions. So, and they started answering. And this do came first, and this do is uh, one of the people in Yale who is authorized to formulate the plans for the first contact. And the Yales were selected, elected by other aliens to do the first contact because they are related to humans. They are our descendants in many ways. They are created from human DNA and Zeta Gray DNA by Zetas and placed on their own planet and they already evolved to the fourth, density, the fourth dimension while we are here in the third making it. So we are very happy things this do and actually Liney and other members of the site thank you for the work you are doing on the, our climate project and our earth axis fixing our earth axis wobbling so they send love to you thank you this do. So we're very honored by you choosing us to speak and uh, help as much as we can. It was a surprise for me because I didn't even know what channeling was when I started to do it. So then I was told what it was and, and I was I surprised. A, I wrote a book. Before that I wrote a book uh, on channeling, mostly based on Bashar. We love Bashar. Bashar is best. Mm -hmm. uh, Bashar is a, channel, a channeled being from Sasani and now they're called Shakani. Shakani. Yes. They made it from the fourth to the fifth, to the fifth dimension. We, while well, we are making it from third to the fourth, they are making it from the fourth to the fifth and already made it. So Bashar is talking from Shakani civilization. They're also it's hybrids between 
greys and humans from Earth, so they are sending you their things for uh, for be for giving them uh, for giving rise to them, right? For mm -hmm. making them, for giving our DNA to them. Mm -hmm. And we, I was lucky to you know, Bashar once came through gym, and I had few words with him. It was very nice. So why do we do Reiki while while channeling because we create a nice antenna a nice antenna and it works well for us we kind of linked and and gyms and energy and my energy merge together to create and we are aquarians as as we said so that works well for for channeling yes now money wise we how invite your donations uh, it's very easy to do that. Go to humancalling.org, click the donate button, and you donate through PayPal. If you're not set up with PayPal, send me a message. It's very easy to have email on the side, and there is a text box on the side, it's, or you send a comment, and I can contact you and get donations in any other way possible. We can even take Bitcoin. Bitcoins. Are you aware of Bitcoins? No. These electronic money, which are independent, barely independent from mainstream money, but uh, these are electronic money which can be converted to mainstream money. Oh, uh, what else? Um, Jim takes um, takes reservations for personal channeling sessions through yes. Skype and telephone, yes. and he is now booked. Oh, well, not fully booked, but I am partly booked. Yeah. Partly booked. So you can contact me through the site, and and then uh, I will get in con you in contact with Jim to to set up the channeling thing. Mm -hmm. And we uh, would be happy, especially in this cold weather, would be happy to go to other cities and uh, <laughs> hopefully in the in the south or in hot places and <laughs> get some sun and give a, a channeling session to your people, to your group of people, or and. We can also teach about energy healing and ascension and speak about, we are not telepathic, but we can speak about telepathy and developing your abilities. Mm -hmm. That's about it for me. Anything else? That's about it. We can... Uh, and with Om. And with Om. Um, somebody suggested that we send our appreciation. And... Uh, to just do and his team working on our Earth project. That's wonderful. That's a good idea. That's good. Very good. Just a second. I need a napkin for that. Oh yeah, Om is one of the names of God, one of the vibrations of God, and by itself it doesn't do anything, but it unites us and it unites you as you listen to that. You can Om with us, so we unite together in one vibration. One simple vibration, one simple note, and it's intentionally waving up and down, and that's how it is done. It's not a pure thing, it's kind of going up and down. And the intention you put there is what matters. Yes. We can concentrate on Dee's doing the team up there, helping us out. You start.
Can you play and channel at the same time? Let's 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 like play now. Like oh, yes, okay. you can play now. <laughs> 